Hi everyone, this is Chemistry with Kat. I am Kat and I post new videos every single day at 9 a.m. I have a Master's of Science and a Bachelor of Medical Science and now I tutor university and high school students. I post little lessons every day and I answer your questions. So comment your questions, like my videos, and subscribe to my channel to Ace Chemistry. Today, we are going to be learning how to find the empirical formula and the molecular formula of a molecule. Normally for these questions, we are given the mass percent. In yesterday's video, we covered mass percent and how to find it. If you need a review, I will link the video here. Watch that first. When I was prepping this video, I went over my exams from my first year in university. In my first semester, both the midterm and the final had find the empirical formula as the very first question on the exam, even on the final. I hope that you absorb everything in this video so that you can get those questions right on your exams. And let's be real, the best confidence boost is when you open your exam booklet and the first question is a give me question that you know how to do. So let's do it. The empirical formula is the most simple formula for a molecule. It has the ratios of the full molecule, but in the most simple form. The molecular formula is actually the formula for the molecule. However, both the molecular formula and the empirical formula will have the same ratios. A super clear example of this is glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. That is the molecular formula for glucose. If you look at the ratios of the atoms, it's one carbon to two hydrogen to one oxygen. So one, two, one. Now the empirical formula for glucose would be C, H2, O. It's the most simplified version and the ratio there is one, two, one. Remember that they will both have the same ratio. However, the empirical formula is not glucose. Glucose has to have six carbons and subsequently it has to have 12 hydrogens and six oxygens to be glucose. All right, for my example problem, I've laid out what is given to us. We have the molar mass of the molecule is 227 grams per mole, and then we have the mass percent of each of the atoms in the molecule. Of the mass, 18.5% is nitrogen, 2.22% is hydrogen, 37.02% is carbon, and 42.26% is oxygen. The first thing we have to do is find the mole ratios. We know that all of these mass percents have to add up to 100%. So what we're going to do is assume that we have 100 grams in the sample. First up, we find the moles of each atom. Remember the equation I taught you in a previous video, moles equals mass over molar mass. If you need a review on that, I'll link it here. The moles of nitrogen equal the mass over the molar mass. Because we're pretending there's 100 grams in this sample, we can say that there's 18.5 grams of nitrogen. 18.50 grams divided by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01 grams per mole. My marker really came to life there. That equals 1.320 moles. The moles of hydrogen equal 2.22 grams over the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 grams per mole. That gives us 2.202 moles. Now the moles of carbon equals 37.02 grams divided by the molar mass of carbon, which is on the periodic table, of 12.01 grams per mole. I literally have those molar masses memorized because we use them so often. 3.082 mole. And then the moles of oxygen equals 42.26 grams over 16 grams per mole. That equals 2.641 mole. 
Now, we've calculated what the moles would be in a 100 gram sample. Remember, we're just going for the ratio, so it doesn't matter that there's not actually that many moles in the sample, we just need to find the ratio. We now need to divide all these numbers by the lowest number in order to get the ratio. So the lowest number of moles is nitrogen at 1.320. So I'm gonna divide each one by 1.320. That leaves me with one, 1. 1.668, 2.335, and 2.001. Now, the thing I wanna make sure you don't do is round these numbers. Let me repeat that. Do not round these numbers. The one and the two are okay to round. Like 2.001 is okay to say it's two, but you cannot round 1.668 to two or 2.335, okay? What we have to do is multiply all these numbers until we get whole numbers. So let's multiply them all by two and see what happens. Two, 3.336, 4.67 and 4.002. This still isn't good enough. We can't round 3.336 or 4.67. So let's try multiplying it by three. So now we'll get three. And remember, when you're multiplying, you're multiplying the original. So pretend I scratch that out. It never even happened. And then we get five, seven, and six. These are whole numbers and we can use this. So now we know the empirical formula is N3H5C7NO6. Now it's probably not going to be written with nitrogen first, but on an exam it's probably gonna be a multiple choice question, so you just have to find those numbers. But now let's say they asked us for the molecular formula as well. So here we know we have the empirical formula. This is the most simplified version of the molecule with the correct ratios. Now to find the molecular formula, we're going to find the molar mass of this empirical formula and see how that relates to the molar mass of the molecule there. If it's the same, then we know that this is actually the molecular formula. If it's not, we have to change this formula, double it, triple it, in order to find the proper molecular formula. So let's find the molar mass. We are going to add up the masses of all the atoms in this molecule. Now, if you don't remember how to do this, go watch my moles, mass, and molar mass video. Three nitrogens, 14.01 grams per mole plus five hydrogens, 1.008, plus seven carbons, 12.01 grams per mole, and then I'll put the oxygen down here, plus six oxygens, 16 grams per mole. When we plug all of that into our calculator, it gets 227 grams per mole, which is what the question told us the molar mass of this molecule is. So we actually know that N3H5C7O6 is the empirical formula, but also the molecular formula. Our next question tells us that we have a molar mass of 90 plus or minus four grams per mole. That plus or minus is just accounting for experimental error. So if we find a molar mass anywhere between 86 and 94, we know we're correct. Now, it tells us that our mixture has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it, but it only gives us the mass percent for carbon and hydrogen. So we have to find the mass percent of oxygen. Remember to review my mass percent video if you haven't watched that yet. But this is kind of easy because we know that the mass percents have to equal 100. So all we have to do is take 100 and subtract 53.31 and then subtract 11.19. This leaves us with 35.51%. 
So now we can go into finding our mole ratios. So the moles of carbon is going to equal 53.31 grams over the molar mass of carbon, which is on the periodic table, 12.01 grams per mole. That equals 4.439. Now remember, that's a lot of moles. We're not actually dealing with moles that are in an experiment. We're just dealing with the ratios. So that's why that number is so big. Next, the moles of hydrogen are 11.19 grams divided by 1.008 grams per mole. That equals 11.101 mole. And then oxygen. The moles of oxygen is going to equal 35.51 grams divided by 16 grams per mole. That equals 2.219 mole. Now we have to find the ratio. So we have to divide all these numbers by the lowest number. The lowest one is oxygen at 2.219. So let's divide them all. 2.219 2, 5, and 1. Now these are already in whole numbers, so we know the empirical formula. We have C2H5O. We could put the 1, but we don't need to. Now let's find the molecular formula. So to find the molecular formula, first step is calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula. So the molar mass is going to be two carbons, 12.01, plus five hydrogen, 12.01. Oxygen, I get 45.06 grams per mole. This is not 90 plus or minus 4 grams per mole. However, I know that 45 is half of 90, so let's try multiplying it by 2. Times 2, 90.12 grams per mole. That's within my margin of error, 90 plus or minus 4 grams per mole. So now I know that the empirical formula has to be multiplied by 2 to find the molecular formula. So my molecular formula is going to be C4H10O2. And it is that simple. I love these questions. If I did a good job teaching you how to find the empirical and molecular formula of a molecule, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I post new videos and new lessons every single day at 9 a.m. Please comment any questions you have and I will answer them right away. If you have any questions that you want answered in a video, please let me know. Or any suggestions of what type of video you'd like to see next, let me know. Thanks for tuning in to Chemistry with Kat.